No, don't go in the bush, don't go in the bush. <laughs> me. <laughs> How I didn't break my leg. Hi everyone, Kevin here from Golf Guy Reviews and in today's video I'm going to give you my full on-course review of the Melissi Golf Rangefinder. Now this currently retails in the UK for £120 and for that low price point you've actually got quite a lot of features packed into this little unit. So I'm going to give you my full honest opinions, we're going to go through some of the details of the unit today out here on the course here at Worley Park and I'm going to let you know about the things that I like about this unit, how it performs and actually a few of the things that you're going to want to be aware of before you go ahead and buy it. So we're gonna really answer that question today. Should you be buying a cheaper range finder off of Amazon or should you actually get something a little bit more, you know, reliable, traditional, proven technology, such as we've got here a Bushnell. Now, this is an older Bushnell. This is Tor V3. So since then, there's been the V4 and the V5s as well. But the Bushnell will give us a good indication as to how consistent and accurate the Melissi actually is. So let's jump straight in. Now, one of the first things I did want to point out with the Melissi, Melissi, Mile C, which one is it? Oh God, it's another one of those. Is it Nike, Nike, Adidas, Adidas, Puma, Puma, Footjoy, or uh, Footjoy, that, that one's the same. But I'm gonna call it a Melissi. I think that sounds, you know, kind of cooler. But the first thing that you really notice with it is actually the size. Now, I appreciate that this is an older Bushnell model, so, you know, they are making them a lot smaller than this now. But for 120 pounds, this is a nice compact unit, fits nicely in the palm of your hand. And as I mentioned, for £120, it's got a hell of a lot of features as well. Now, if you are thinking about buying the Melissi, then I've included a link down below in the description where you can buy it on Amazon. And also there is a lower range model as well. So it retails for around £90 in the UK. I think it's around $90 in the US as well. Um, but that version doesn't have quite all the features that this one does. But as I say, I've included links down below in the description. So first things first, let's talk about the impressive features that the Melissi has on offer for its small £120. Well, I say small actually you know 120 pounds is still a significant amount of money but it's a lot cheaper than other range finders with the same features so let's just run through those features now first of all it's got a six times magnification so actually that's quite nice because it means it's quite nice and clear you can see a long way with the scope you've got a normal point and shoot mode so you know you can just pick out the range of trees flags bunkers that kind of thing but actually you've got a lock-on feature as well so that's kind of handy it's a lock-on feature that has a vibrate function as well so it lets you know once you've actually locked onto the flag but I'll talk more about that in a little bit another great feature this has got on it hang on my trolley's escaping from me and there's a pond at the end so let's just catch that up testing the power of the gimbal now no don't go in the bush don't go in the bush oh look at that drama on a review uh, so anyway going back to it so a feature that I just wanted to get back to as well that's actually quite impressive for the fact that this is only 120 pounds is that it's got slope on it as well so you know there's a lot of rangefinders that at that money don't have slope um, and it's got a really simple little easy button just on the side so you can make it tournament legal or if you want slope on you can turn it on and it's no longer tournament legal uh, but yeah so again nice little feature to have for just 120 pounds one other quite random function that it's got on there is it's actually got a speed mode so you can actually change it uh, to measure how fast something is going so if you want to see how fast the golf cart in front of you is moving I suppose you can do if you want to uh, excuse me you're going less than 18 miles an hour get a move on I've got no idea why that's on there really uh, so you know I'm not even going to test it for this review right so here we are on a par three this is about 180 yards so I've got the Melissi here and if we do it on pin lock mode let's have a look see what we get so we get 184 yards 178 yards so that's a five yard difference six yard difference even then I get 221 so it's picked up the trees behind it 197 all right, 178, there we go. So we're back on the flag again. And 180. So, you know, there's a couple of yards in it. Now, I've got here the Bushnell. So let's see what the Bushnell gives us as well. So let's have a look here. So 179 yards to the flag, and that locked on a lot easier. Again, 179, I was scanning behind the flag, and then it come, come in front of it. Again, there we go, 179. So, you know, the Bushnell isn't giving me any kind of variations in the reading whereas the Melissi was giving me a few yards difference as well. Right, so you might have noticed that I'm in different clothes and that's because this is a week later than the rest of the review. Now, the reason why I'm filming this clip is actually I found out that I was using the Melissi wrong. Initially, when I was using it with the flag lock mode, 
I thought that it wasn't really picking up very well and it wasn't locking onto the flag quick enough. That's because you don't just tap the button to lock onto the flag, you actually hold the button and then scan around the flag. When you hold the button, it actually works really well. I'm here at Donington Valley down in Berkshire and it's been working really well over the last two days. Picks up the flag, not a problem, and actually gives me some quite consistent readings. So in terms of actually the flag lock mode, you use it, you hold the button, you scan on, and it gives you a little bit of a jolt or vibrate once it's locked on. And it's actually really easy to use, so quite impressed with that. I really hope you're enjoying this video today and you're finding it helpful, so hit that like button if you are. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech, right here on Golf Guy Reviews. So the unit itself is nice and compact. As I say, it fits quite nicely in the palm of your hand. And you know, it's got kind of these rubber elements along the top here, you can see, um, and you've got two buttons. You've got a mode button and the actual kind of, I don't know, point and shoot button, we'll call it that, uh, the laser button. And you've got a bit of a crisscross pattern on the bottom there as well. So, you know, it's exactly where your thumb would sit. So it gives you a nice grip. And as I say, it fits quite nicely in the palm of your hand. One other thing I would mention as well is that when I first got it, uh, it was all out of focus and I thought the bloody thing was broken. But actually, you can twist the nozzle here on the viewfinder um, and it actually adjusts the focus for you. So, you know, if you do think that when you first buy it, just be aware that's all you need to do and it brings everything nicely into focus. Now the unit doesn't come with a rechargeable battery uh, but it does come with a CR2 battery and there's a little notification at the bottom of the viewfinder to let you know when that battery's running out. It's really easy and simple there's no kind of screw mechanism you just pop open the little door on the side and you pop the battery in there. You can see actually in that part there that's also where you keep the little slope button so if you want to turn slope on and off that's where you put it. Now, one thing I did just want to say about the unit is that it says that it's splash proof, but it's certainly not water or weather proof. And you can see on this little door here, there's no like rubber seals or anything like that. So I wouldn't really trust this. I'm not entirely sure how well this would actually hold up if you got caught in a downpour. So, yeah, that's something to be aware of. It doesn't look too kind of, you know, weather proof really. Now talking of weatherproof, the unit actually comes with this case as well. Um, firstly, I think maybe some other manufacturers might want to have a word with Malesi because it looks like they might have kind of copied their homework when it comes to the case. Um, but, oh, the flag just blew out, that's how windy it is today. Actually the case, it's one of these kind of like hard soft cases if that kind of makes sense. You've got a decent amount of protection to it there um, and you've got a full zip all the way around uh, and you've also got this rubber hook that goes on the front. So you don't have to keep like unzipping it each time you use it. Um, you can just clip it onto the bag with a carabiner so that comes with it as well um, and then you just kind of unhook it and hook it back up again when you're using it out on the course so actually for 120 pounds i'm pretty impressed that it come with such a sturdy case i'm not sure how weatherproof this case actually is because if you're using it out and you get caught in a shower you want to want to know whether or not this is waterproof so let's find out right so i'm back at home in my garden and i wanted to do a test to see how waterproof the actual case really is now i'm not going to keep the rangefinder in there because i don't want to break it in case it's not so we're going to use the old reliable gray sock so as you can see this is nice and dry at the moment and we're going to pop that in the case and just like the garden of anyone that's got small kids there are toys littered all over the place so i'm going to use one of my son's toys i genuinely didn't realize that the water poured out the side like that Okay, right, we're gonna use it anyway. Right, so I'm gonna fill it back up, here we go. And we're just gonna done up the case. Right, the case is done up, and we're just gonna pour some water over the case. Let's see what happens on the inside. So look, I'm going right over the seam of the zip. Okay, that run out of water really fast. This probably looks ridiculous, let's do a little bit more. Why not? So it's not the most scientific of tests, but it is a test. So let's see what is gonna happen. Do you think? that there's going to be any water on the sock let's find out here we go and uh, there's a tiny bit of water there on the toe of the sock can you see that there actually if i look inside the case as well i can see quite a bit of dampness kind of coming through on both sides of the cases um so yeah quite a fair bit of water has actually seeped into the case and you can even see i don't even know why i thought this was going to be waterproof because the back of the case where the uh, kind of elastic band sits it's got two massive holes at the back of it anyway so this was never really going to be waterproof to begin with so we've established that if you are you know caught in a very light bit of drizzle you might be absolutely fine but in terms of whether this case is actually waterproof especially if you're going to get caught in a heavy downpour out in the rain absolutely not this case is definitely not waterproof and will not keep your rangefinder dry in the rain right back to the main video so when you first get the unit, it actually arrives in meters and that's no good for us here in the UK because we play golf in yards. Um, so 
what you've got here is you've just got this little mode button on the top there. So you just hold that down for two seconds and it changes it from meters to yards nice and easy. Now the display down the viewfinder is actually nice and clear. It's actually kind of crisp and clear. I thought it might be, you know, a little bit of lower quality uh, because it's only 120 pounds. But actually I was really impressed with the quality of the display. Um, so you can see that you've got like a crosshair in the middle and it's nice and easy to use. You just push the laser button on the top and it'll give you a yardage. If you're on scan mode, you get a little flag pop up on the side as well. Um, and you know, you can use that to scan. And then also if you've got slope mode turned on, it will give you the actual yardage on the top and then it will give you the smaller yardage or the bigger yardage depending upon whether you're higher or lower um, it will give you your slope yardage underneath and it actually tell you the degree angle as well although i'm never going to know that i don't you know i don't need that but it's there if you want it so one other quick thing that i just wanted to highlight when i was doing my research uh, for rangefinders and having a look at the alternatives out on the market i saw that american golf had a phaser rangefinder for 140 pounds but when you actually look at it it is exactly the same, I'm telling you, exactly as the Malesi. It's even got the same product code, uh, PF210, I think off the top of my head. It looks exactly the same, it's got the same model number, it's just a different colour. And yet, the version of American Golf is £140 for the Phaser, and the Malesi is £120 on Amazon. So, what's that about? I, c I cannot see what the reason for the price difference is going to be. Um, but, you know, check them out for yourself, if you are thinking about buying that Phaser, might want to take a look at the Melissi instead. So what do I think of the Melissi rangefinder? For £120, should you buy it? Well, I think it depends what you're after in a rangefinder. So actually really quite impressed with the functionality and the performance of the unit. It might not feel, you know, the most expensive unit, but that's because it's not the most expensive unit. It's only £120. So if you're only looking for a cheap rangefinder that's going to give you yardages and work with a lock-on feature and have the slope functions, and you don't want to spend too much money, actually, this could be quite a good little option. I've been pretty impressed with it. No, that's a lie, actually. I've been really impressed with it for £120. If you want something a little bit more premium and, you know, it's going to have a bit more waterproof properties because, as I said before, I'm not entirely convinced about the seal on that door and how well this would actually handle, you know, a little bit of rain. And also, if you need a rangefinder that's going to give you the exact yardages consistently every single time, then you might need to consider spending more money. However, if you're happy with a rangefinder that's going to give you yardages, you know, that give you maybe a couple of yards difference if you zap it each time, that's not the end of the world. For me personally, I can't control my distances well enough so that I control it a couple of yards. So actually, for £120, this is definitely worth considering. If you're thinking about buying it, don't forget I've included a link down in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this review today, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech, right here on Golf Guy Reviews. I really hope you're enjoying this video today and you're finding it helpful. So make sure you hit that like button if you are. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with all my latest reviews of golf shoes, clothing and tech, right here on the me. Ah. How I didn't break my leg. <laughs> I just went down that hole all the way down, up past my knee. 